Now let's talk about just a few more concepts around locking down a client computer from a security perspective. The first is to make sure that users don't ever sign on with administrative privileges. If someone needs administrative privileges on their computer, create a separate account and let them log on and elevate processes as needed. Minimize the software that's installed on a computer. Every piece of software is a potential security flaw because every piece of software potentially has bugs. The less software you have, the less opportunity for bugs and the less opportunity for security loopholes. So just install what's absolutely necessary. For the same reason, keep both software and operating systems up to date at all times. Install, update, and use anti-malware utilities. Minimize users' ability to install and run new software applications. And there are a couple of Windows features that can help you do so. Newest versions of Windows, this is Windows 7 and later, support a feature called AppLocker. It's very similar to an older feature called Software Restriction Policies. So let's take a look at what that does. This is something that you'll configure almost exclusively through Group Policy because you want it to affect all of your computers. You will not find it under Software Settings, as the name implies. Instead, you'll locate it under Security Settings, Software Restriction Policies. You can see here that there are no restriction policies defined, so let's create one. There we go, we've created a policy. So enforcement of this policy, we're going to make sure that all software is restricted except libraries such as DLLs. Enabling enforcement on DLLs, simply because so many Windows applications call so many DLLs, can really affect system performance, so you don't want to really do that. We're going to apply this policy to all users, and we're going to ignore certificate rules. Certificate rules can lower the performance of your machine, but they do provide a much better layer of security, which you'll see in just a moment. So that's the enforcement piece. The designated file types identifies the things that we consider to be an executable, such as exes, help files, HTML applications, and so forth. These are the files that software restriction policies will be applied to. Trusted Publishers only comes into play when you start using security certificates. Let's see what that actually looks like. I have a Windows Explorer window set up to the System32 portion of my drive here, and I'm just going to look for a particular, let's just look for an executable that I know I can find quickly, uh, such as Notepad. Fortunately, these are alphabetic, but there's just an awful lot of stuff in here. There's Notepad. Let's right-click it and look at its properties. We're going for the Details tab here, and you'll notice that this identifies itself as a piece of Microsoft software. It does look to me like it's been digitally signed. So what that means is this executable has been signed by a certificate issued by Microsoft. So if we come back to the idea of trust here, and we configure trusted publishers, we can say that all software signed by Microsoft is trusted. So we will allow it to run, or we will identify it based on that. Because Microsoft and many other vendors are in the habit of signing their programs or applications, that's a good way of identifying them. The next thing we need to set is security levels. So we can set the disallowed security level, meaning software will not run. We can set the basic user, which allows programs to execute as a user that does not have administrative access rights, but we can still access resources accessible by normal users, or unrestricted, meaning everything runs and what it can do is determined by the permissions of the user. And then we set up additional rules. So kind of the trick here is that you create a security level, that's the default, and you might say that by default all software is disallowed. You then create rules to override that default. You can create a path rule, such as these path rules, which allow anything in these locations to automatically run at the unrestricted level. The only danger there is if a piece of malware is able to insert itself into one of those locations, then it's basically bypassing your security. A hash rule lets you browse for an executable, Let's go back to Windows System32 and see if we can find Notepad. There it is. 
This will identify this particular executable, and I'm going to set it to be allowed to run unrestricted. The only downside to this hash technique is that if this executable is ever changed, such as by a patch or a service pack, then the hash will no longer be valid and you'll have to go in and recreate it. So it can be pretty time consuming. You can also define network zone rules and certificate rules. And if you remember, this is the thing that is not set by default, but we can browse for a certificate. Let's just go back to notepad. We'll extract the certificate from that. Oh, actually, that one doesn't contain a valid certificate. Let's go to my program files folder instead and see if we have anything in there like Microsoft Visual Studio. This might be digitally signed. We have to find an executable. Oh, we have to actually find a certificate first. Let's go after a signed file instead. Exploring around in here can be quite a lot of fun. How about Internet Explorer? Let's see if it's signed. Yes, it is. And so its subject certificate name is Microsoft Corporation. So I'm going to say anything signed by Microsoft Corporation can run unrestricted. Now, this is the trick. I've created this certificate rule, but it's told me that they're not currently enforced. So I'd have to go back and allow that enforcement. I'm not going to do that because I haven't really evaluated its impact on my performance. If all of this seems like a lot of work, <laughs> it is. And that's why that other feature, AppLocker, was created in newer versions of Windows. Essentially what AppLocker does is it allows you to scan the applications that computers are actually running. So whatever your users are really using, you'll be able to create an automatic inventory so that this rules list can be populated automatically without you having to go in and manually create all of these different rules. It's a lot more practical of a way of achieving the same thing that software restriction policies attempts to do.